Hi, welcome to Direct Joy. Tuesday lunchtime and I'm Cherie and I'm bringing you Direct Joy, which is my offering of free mental health and emotional health explorations, discussing any questions that you have, anything that you put to me where you think, I really would like to explore what this is all about, what mental health questions you have, what emotional health questions you have. Mental health has come up so much in the last year or so um, and how we have our own mental health and what that terrain looks like and how we manage it. And people have questions. People are now kind of thinking more about, well, what is this? You know, it's no longer just about the really sad deep end of mental health but about actually how we manage our mental health and our emotional well-being on a day-to-day -day basis on a week-to-week -week basis and some of the changes that we want to reflect on and make and some of the stuff that that brings up that's really deep so I wanted to be able to have an opportunity to offer some of that for free and um, it's not advice. It is very much um, kind of the world according to Cherie. I'm a psychologist, a psychotherapist and um, a counsellor. Um, I'm a mum and um, yeah, I just uh, I want to show up and offer what I have as some of the, the explorations, the clinical, personal and professional experience that I've had from working across the board in mental health and emotional well-being and psychotherapy. Um, I love to read, um, I love to engage in new experiences um, and I love to see also what the world has to offer, what nature has to offer to help us to explore those things and um, what our relationship, what shows up in our relationships and all these patterns and um, all the beauty of, of our world and all the shadow side of that, all of the, you know, the darker, deeper dives that we go on and the purges and um, yeah. So today we see um, the start of a new cycle and um, that's with uh, the new moon. So the moon has a, a 28 day soul, a, a monthly cycle, um, much like um, females. And um, it made me think kind of with this new moon about, well, what actually is happening with other cycles? And instantly I went to toxicity and the kind of that's that's where I go. That's what I think about is those kind of pain points and what we can do with those pain points and yeah, how we heal from pain. And so this was actually a question that I, I wanted to bring this one today was how, what can we do to help break the cycle of toxicity and toxicity shows up in our world, in, in, in our lives, in our, it, so many different ways, so many different ways and uh, uh, occasionally stroke most of the time, I'm not really sure which one it is, I think it depends where we're at and, and what's going on in, in our lives and how we respond some of those things can actually be quite often and yeah toxic and we we know those things as food as drink as relationships as work as time management um and there is a great deal there's there's so many labels that we can uh, ascribe to toxicity um but I think it's also really, really important to consider that actually we are drawn to those things because they're actually quite comforting. And we tend to repeat those cycles because it's a comfort. You know, if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. And actually to do what you've always done and get what you've always got is that familiar sense of knowing who you are and that's what that's what you do that's what Cherie does that's how I show up that's what I choose to be that's who I am and when we get new roles when we get new labels there's an adjustment time there's a change if it be it a change of job be it a change of relationship be it a change of diet be it a change of status be it a new label be it losing another label the loss of a person, a friend, a hobby, any any loss, any gain creates a different vibe and that needs adjustment. That needs getting used to and, you know, what 
is this version of me and however whatever words we put to that and we all have different ways of, of our, our, the language that we speak I think it's really important to see some of the repeat cycles that actually are toxic because sometimes some of the things that we do aren't actually that you know they're 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 kind of good for us. They're things that we do repeat that we want to continue repeating. But other things, taking the space and time to say, okay, well, one minute, is that actually really serving me? Is that actually really serving a function that I want it to serve? And you may instantly come up with something where you go, oh, that feels quite toxic in my life and it can sh it can show up in a variety of different ways so we find that there's some kind of interesting complex links between maybe what we do or what we choose to let's use food for it as an example what we choose to ingest or not um what we may find hard to digest what we may have a reaction to be it a small reaction or a large reaction and the fact that we continue to choose to do that thing that takeaway, that uh, meal that maybe gives us a bit of a dicky belly, that um, choice of relationship that we know maybe isn't quite the friendship or on par as the way that we need to, maybe the communication's out, maybe the um, just how you hang out with each other, how you show up for each other is not what you want it to be. Maybe there's something deeper of a real yearning for something and you're trying with that person, but it just isn't happening. And that's the kind of level of toxicity that I'm talking about. That sense of things that actually just doesn't roll with us. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right in our body. It doesn't feel right in our mind. It doesn't feel right in our dreams. It just doesn't show up. And therapy gives us a space. Counselling and psychotherapy gives us a space to explore why. And, you know, we get told a lot of, you know, there's the typical kind of Mickey taking of psychotherapy. Is that it's all your mother's fault. It's all your father's fault. Well, I don't really ascribe to that. I think past experiences, past relationships, obviously your mum and dad are key in that because they should be. They're your mum and dad. You grew inside your mum and you're of your dad. You know, that is just amazing, isn't it? You know, every baby born is just such a miracle and such a joy bringer to the world and rightly so. And and, and we, we grow of our families, of our siblings. Juliet Mitchell talks about the sibling relationships, which is so interesting to me as the eldest of four sisters. You know, who's alongside us as well as who's above us and you know what what we actually do with that how we're informed by that and the bits that feel traumatic the bits that feel a bit toxic the bits that jar the bits that I don't speak their language am I adopted you know and and also then in adoption situations in fostering situations what the hell is going on how do I find my identity and how do I roll with this along the world and where do I come from? And all of us have that sense of who, what, why, where, how, and how do I move forward with this? And we've talked previously in Direct Joys about the fact that 70 odd percent of our time is spent, our mind time is spent in the future. But how much of it is spent in the past? You know, how much do we dwell on of the fact of, oh, yeah, but I was hurt by that or this happened or I showed up like this or this person showed up like this or I had this experience in art class and they told me that I, I'm not artistic. Everyone's artistic. Everyone is able to show up creatively and has a creative energy and force so who is that to tell you that and actually what we do with those messages is we tend to they flow through our, our, our present they flow from the past and they remind us and actually are they invited are they invited at that table at your table today and therapy gives us an enormous amount of space to be able to reflect. I just want to say hi to everyone who's showing up today because it's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see some new new faces of people that um, are in my life. And I just want to say hi. Um, it's great to see you. So, yeah, stay tuned in. And if you're watching the replay, say hi to. Um, so what do we do with that? That's what we do in therapy. We're thinking about how this stuff ties together and how we actually embrace 
and start to make some choices around that. We see what shows up. We understand it from a past experience of all relationships, all past experience and anything that really is unconsciously, consciously and subconsciously really um, emerging as, as you emerge. And that means that we can identify the cycle. We can identify the what. We can identify the why maybe or get further closer to the why. But actually what do we then do about it and is there even a doing or is there a sitting with that for a while and I think everybody's different and everybody needs a certain different space and taste and texture to their therapy but actually what can you do so it, you know if we think about this as a direct joy actually what directly can you do now or what choices do you have available and I love the idea of the sense of, well, what would it be like to actually not do anything about the toxicity? What would it be like to acknowledge it, to acknowledge whether you want to work with it, whether you want to understand it fuller? And that can be a yes or a no, or it could be a maybe or a later, whatever it might be. Like, you know, everybody has those choices available to them of, of yes, no, maybe later. And, but there's still something about, there's nothing stopping you introducing the good stuff. And when you introduce this, the good stuff, you kind of up level. It's a bit like playing a computer game. You're like, oh, one minute, I'm up, I've up leveled, but I've not beaten the baddie of the, of the previous level. You don't have to beat the baddie. You don't have to beat the toxicity. What you can do is offer yourself the up level and you can come, you can come back to the monsters if you need to. If necessary, you can offer yourself the opportunity of the good stuff. And by good stuff, I mean, you know, what is it like to enrich your life in whatever way you choose with the new introduction of new relationships, new hobbies, new food, new hydration, new, yeah, what what's that like, you know, to introduce new books to your world, to introduce new audio books, to introduce new films, to, you know, add in as opposed to take out I think what we tend to think of with breaking cycles, which we want to break, is that we have to break them to the point of crash. And actually, what's it like to introduce extra added goodness? And I like that idea. That works for me. That works in the work that I do. Because it's about grace and it's interesting that uh, one of the people that is watching today has the surname Grace and it uh, that reminder that we need the grace. We need the grace with ourselves. The importance of the fact of the route to joy is through grace and what's it like to offer ourselves that radical self-love through grace what does grace mean to you it has lots of different meanings as as a, a, across if, if you look it up if you explore the idea of grace but what does it actually mean to you and um, how can that take shape how can that actually have a meaning rather than a word or a, a concept or a, an intangible process like what's it actually what does it actually mean to have grace you know, does it mean stopping? Does it mean slowing down? Does it mean giving yourself the time? What does it mean to gift yourself? What are you gifting yourself? And is it about fancy stuff? Or is it about having a 20 minute bath rather than a 10 minute shower or wash a couple of times a week? Is it about saying, oh, okay, one minute, I treat myself to a takeaway. But what if I'd also, 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 really important word is also but what if I also had a meal once a week where I treated myself to exploring the cookbooks or um signing up to hello fresh and exploring some of the recipes but in a safer way because you maybe you're rubbish at recipes and maybe you're rubbish at cooking you know and what's it then like to say well maybe I'm not rubbish at cooking you know what's it like to pick up a pencil and draw even though you may be completely pant at drawing it doesn't mean that you need to sell it it just maybe means that you can have a, a drawer of whatever is in your heart and whatever you may offer. And that's the key to breaking the toxicity because you're introducing the goodness. Um, taking the time to sit with that is really important. Um, I, I'm conscious that I just rambled 
quite quickly through that, um, which is something that does happen in direct joy. So please do get in contact if there's anything that you would like me to clarify, because I'd love to clarify because I love to keep talking. Um, yeah, there is a there's a there's a lot in there, and um, hopefully over the weeks we're unpacking this stuff. But as we unpack it, we introduce more goodness. The idea is always to introduce more goodness, and um, yeah, ha give you the kind of ideas to start exploring and reflecting and seeing where you're at. So, with that in mind, one of the other questions that's that has come up from someone is about how we keep strong boundaries, which I thought was really interesting with today and thinking about helping breaking the toxicity because there's quite a, a similar thing because boundaries are vital. OK, so we have a lock on our front door. We have a lock on our back door. We have locks on windows. We have a door to the fridge. We have doors to store things. We have doors to wardrobes. We have entry and exit points which are secured. But does your heart. Does. Do the boundaries of your heart and your mind and your soul and your time to you to the essence of who you are do those boundaries have a function in the same way as the front door lock do they have the same function what function do they have and what is it about boundaries we tend to put some boundaries in place that feel familiar. They feel safe. They are what they are. That's the way it's always been. That's how I relate to that person. That's, you know, we argue. We have a way of being with each other. That's the way it is. And that's my boundary with them. I do have a boundary, you know, but that's the way it is. And what impact does that have? What results does that have? What toxicity cycles are you then in or do you notice? Do you have an, how do you observe how that shows up for you? So what function do those boundaries serve? Are they serving you any function or are they just the way it's always been? And if you do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. One of the things that, um, the uh if you if you ever look into kind of new moon cycles and full moon cycles one of the things about a new moon which was yesterday moving into today is to set intentions and simple straightforward what's your intention what's your intention for the next 28 days what's your intention for the next month what would you like to see f fruitful in your life and yeah one of the things that can be helpful is to think about just one of the ideas around health, money, work, relationships. What do you intend? What do you intend? And is that aligned with the current boundaries that you have? So, for example, if you look in your bank account, have you got a unknown standing order, an unknown PayPal? Oh, yeah, look, I've got one. 28.99 goes out of my account every month and it's to a PNET 8866. I haven't got a clue what it is. Why am I leaking 28.99 a month to some PayPal thing that I'm not sure of? And how did I get there? And why are my boundaries not high with my money, my abundance, my offering? And yeah, and I'm sure it's absolutely kosher. I'm sure it's absolutely fine. But what is it? And why don't I know what it is? And that's really interesting because if you then apply that to other areas, well, what about my health? What about, you know, maybe I don't want MSG in my Chinese takeaway, but I love a Chinese takeaway. Maybe with my work, well, maybe I do want to work a little bit less or maybe I want to work a little bit smarter or maybe I want to explore a different area. What is kind of going on with my boundaries what do I want and when we set those intentions we wobble oh my goodness we wobble wobble wibble wibble wobble resistance it is so hard when we set those intentions because everything comes up 
and when we really think about what's coming up that we do want to change there's a tendency then to go okay well I'm going to set my boundary really here that's what I'm doing boundary and it's like okay well really do you really want that you know we're not in a cowboy film <laughs> What do you want? And it kind of comes back to that grace. What do you want? What plan do you want to put in place? Like, I really want to have a grip on my PayPal. OK, I don't want that twenty eight ninety nine going out or I want to know what it is. Yeah. And what is that about? And what what is that bringing up? If I had a grip on my PayPal account, if I had a grip on my MSG from my Chinese, what would I feel like? And when you start to introduce that, the boundaries become a lot clearer because then you can say, actually, that's how I really want it to play out. That's how I really want it to feel. I want to go into my bank account and I want to know. I want to see the money coming in. I want to see it going out for a decent reason, a reason that I see viable. I want to be able to give. I want to be able to receive. I want that abundance. I want to treat myself to that Friday night Chinese, but I don't want to feel like rubbish at three in the morning when my liver goes, ah, Sheree, you heard him. You know, I want to know that I'm putting the good stuff in and that I'm feeling good and putting that plan in place. Now, the benefit of putting that plan in place and this, these can be small plans. For example, like my plan about PayPal, $28.99, check it out, done, sorted. And then the plan is, well, how do I avoid that in the future? Well, maybe I check PayPal once a month, once a fortnight. What do I actually do to put the plan in place? And that becomes the new familiar. It doesn't take any more time because actually I have spent loads of time, even this time, talking about the twenty eight ninety nine. So what does it actually mean? And what we can then do is root those boundaries, root those intentions into who we are gracefully. And that can only be good, right? But if we keep doing the thing that we know has an impact on us negatively, that's what we keep getting back. And if we keep doing it, yes, it's familiar. Yes, it's safe. Yes, we're going to wobble. Yes, we're going to go, oh, yeah, but that's a pain in the ass. I don't want to log on. I can't remember my PayPal password. I don't really want to check out my balance because, oh, yeah, but I've got that standing order that I actually don't really want to have that subscription to. Like Even now, I can feel my jaw and my teeth going, right? I can feel that tension. I don't want that tension. Not over that, right? There's loads of things to be tense about. There's loads of things showing up in the world. Do I really need that one? And what's it like? like? My shoulders just dropped, right? What's it like to really invite and embrace that to avoid that, the impact, the toxicity? What's that really like? And having those boundaries, having people around us that respect those boundaries, having wonderful, joyous opportunities, having plans in place that you really want that you really want. Our relationship with time comes up with that. And yeah, let's. I think probably let's go into that later because I think time is really important because it allows us then to see the time that we invest in ourselves. We can see the time that we can say, oh yes, if I've got that boundary in place and if I've got that, if I can introduce this and break that cycle of toxicity, the pieces start to come together. And that's that's what I'm massively passionate about is actually utilising, seeing, feeling who we are and using the time that we have because, you know, time is precious. Relationships, people, you are precious. So, yeah, on that note. I think we'll leave it there for today. It's really great to see you. Really great to see the comments. Thank you, everybody. It's lovely to see you. Um, I know lots of you watch the replay, so thank you. Um, thank you for the love. Please send me any questions you have, anything, anything at all that just kind of pops up and makes you kind of think. We have a few in the pipeline for next week, but yeah, just send them to me. I want to hear from you. It's fantastic. Um, and yeah, keep following me and um yeah it's great to see you um the world is opening up again so i hope you're all enjoying that but you know if it's a tough time refer back to last week because you know covering the the anxiety that's coming up and um is is important so it's really important to be taking care of ourselves um all the time but especially at the moment because there's a lot of change and transition so the more space we can create the more we stop the more we take into account is just vital so it's great to see you and i look forward to seeing you next week if not before
Take care. Bye, everyone.